What's up, y'all? Today, we're going to be taking some time talking about infant baptism according to the Catholic website, catholic.com. And we're going to be making some brief comments on some of the things that they're talking about. We want individuals to see the inconsistencies which are occurring in the doctrines that are being taught, not only by the Catholics, but by other religious individuals. And so the goal is to make you think spiritually, religiously, because religion is not a bad thing, depending upon what you are putting into your religion and where you're getting your religion from. Now, we have this article, and on this article, it's from Catholic.com, and it says this, Fundamentalists often criticize the Catholic Church's practice of baptizing infants. According to them, meaning according to fundamentalists, baptism is for adults and older children because it is to be administered only after one has undergone a born-again experience, that is, after one has accepted Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. Now, this phrase, accepting Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, that's not in the Bible. The closest thing I could find to that was Colossians chapter 2, I believe verse 6, where it says, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so ye walk in him. But that's not the same thing that people say, accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, which that idea of accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior is usually trusting in the power of Jesus to forgive you. But when people use that terminology, they usually have you say a prayer. Now, according to the Bible, when somebody trusts in Jesus to provide them forgiveness and eternal life, they are then baptized for the forgiveness of their sins so that way they can become saved. So this is referencing on the Catholic website. It says, at the instance of acceptance, when he is born again, the adult becomes a Christian and his salvation is assured forever. Baptism follows, though it has no actual salvific value. So concerning this, you have individuals say that they're born again and then afterward baptized. That's not true. You're not born again before you're baptized. That's when you're born again. Because born again is a reference to coming back to spiritual life. Jesus had that conversation with Nicodemus about coming back to spiritual life, being born again. And we learn in Colossians chapter 2, verse 12 and 13, you are brought back to spiritual life when you're buried with Jesus in baptism and then risen with him. And it says, in fact, one who dies before being baptized, but after being saved, goes to heaven anyway. So according to the Bible, you believe and then you're baptized and then you're saved. But it is true. This Catholic website does state a truth here concerning our friends in the community who teach that you are saved. And then if you wait two to three weeks, then you can be baptized. I had a conversation with somebody who said he was born again posted a photo of supposedly when he was born again and it shows him being baptized. And he says, well, if I died two weeks before I was baptized, I'd still go to heaven. So you don't need to be born again. I asked him, I said, so you don't need to be born again to go to heaven? Because Jesus says you do in John 3. And then he deleted the comment because there's only one possibility. If you say that you are baptized, and then you say, if you would have died before that, there's only one possibility of what you can say if you're going to believe a doctrine which says that you were saved, is that you don't believe that you were born again during baptism, or you believe that you can go to heaven without being born again, which Jesus says you can't. So the whole conversation has to do with the new birth, and it says this, as fundamentalists see it, that was a long one. Fundamentalists, baptism is not a sacrament, but an ordinance. It does not in any way convey the grace it symbolizes. Rather, it is merely a public manifestation of the person's conversion. So I would agree that our religious friends in the community, a lot of them, members of sectarian groups involved in heresies, they do promote the idea that baptism is a symbol of the grace that you received. But what is the Holy Spirit really doing during your baptism, they would say, well, just identifying you with the death of Jesus, not really anything. It's just a symbol. It's just a sign of what already took place, which is just not good. That's not good teachings. It's not good to believe. It's not good to teach. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit because I just want to make a brief comment on this real quick. 
Christ calls all to baptism. We have in the scriptures, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But guess what you need to need in order to call on the name of the Lord to be saved? You need to be saved. If you are in need of being saved, then you'd call on the name of the Lord. And the question is then, saved from what? It can't be physical death because everybody's going to physically die and everybody's going to be raised. Is it spiritual death? That's what it appears. Ephesians 2, we're dead in trespasses and sins. Romans 7, 9 teaches that doesn't occur when you're born physically. That occurs when you enter your youth age. You become dead spiritually. You can't die unless you're first alive anyways. So you have this teaching concerning needing to be born again. And you are in need of being born again once you become spiritually dead. You need to come back to spiritual life. And we learn that the spiritual life given to an individual is New Testament terminology for being forgiven now that Jesus has gone into heaven. You're born again. That's New Testament terminology for forgiveness through the Messiah and belief in Jesus as the resurrected Messiah who will judge the world. So we have what it says here. I'm going to scroll down a little bit because I just want to take a note on this. The historic Christian church has always held that Christ's law applies to infants as well as adults. Really? 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, telling them to get a job to work. Is that what you do for infants? Are you telling infants to go get a job? How many places in a community have received applications for infants? How many are willing to accept applications for infants? Can an infant type up their own resume? If an infant gets hired to work a job, are they going to be doing sufficient work? Can you leave them unsupervised? This statement that Christ's law applies to infants, how much of it? What parts of it? All of it? Are infants getting jobs? Is it not part of Christ's law? If any man does not work, neither shall he eat. Well, that mother better better stop feeding her baby. If this is what that means, that's not what this means. Jesus' law applies to individuals who are able to make a choice for themselves to choose. Infants grow up to become children. Children are told to obey their parents, but guess what? Do the children, while they're in a stage of obeying their parents, do they truly have an understanding of good and evil? You're supposed to train up a child in the way that he should go so that way when they're older they don't depart from it they don't know what it means when they're a child but the goal is is to get them familiar with the terminology get them familiar with the understanding that obedience is required so that way that when they get older and enter into their youth age they already have those principles instilled within them so that way they understand okay i messed up I need forgiveness. And who do you go to to receive forgiveness? Well, according to Catholicism, you go to an earthly father who's not your father, who has no children that you call father anyways. But according to the Bible, you go to God, the heavenly father. There's only one father. And Jesus said he's in heaven. So this says, Christ's law applies for infants as well as adults. For Jesus said that no one can enter heaven unless he has been born of water and the Holy Spirit. Well, did you know that this terminology of being born of the Spirit and being born of the flesh is also used in Galatians 5? And it talks about pursuing the desires of the flesh and pursuing the desires of the Spirit. Put two infants next to one another, a Catholic infant and a non-Catholic infant. What's the difference? Will you notice a difference in their behavior? Is the Catholic infant who has been sprinkled or poured water on or been immersed in water, are they going to behave in a superior way than an infant next to them? Neither one has knowledge of good and evil. Neither one needs to be born again in that moment. When they grow older, entering into their youth age and choose to do wrong, that's when they will need to be born again. 
but it says, Jesus' words can be taken to apply to anyone capable of belonging to the kingdom. Jesus asserted such even for little children, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. That wasn't saying baptize them. Did they need to go get a job too? No, they didn't. Were these infants, because the command to assemble on the first day of each week, you're supposed to leave your home. 1 Corinthians 11, you leave your home. Having commandment to assemble on the first day of the week, if the parents of the infant are sick, is the infant under the commandment to go meet with the members of the body of Christ on the first day of the week? No, they are under the authority of the parents. If the parents are, if the parents are sick, are the children under a bonding requirement to go meet with the church on the first day of the week? They're under the authority of the parents. No, they're not. They're under the parents' authority. So you have infants who can't care for themselves, who if the parents are sick, they're not able to care for themselves to go meet with the church and will watch themselves and then make it home safely, right? You see that the law of Christ is not applied to infants. It's for them to learn as they're a child so that when they enter into their youth age, they can receive forgiveness and avoid a lot of destruction or destructive paths in life by abiding by the doctrine of Christ. But the teachings of Christ for an infant is to prepare them for what they will be involving themselves with when they're older, if they want to. And that's the hope. That's the goal. You teach them as infants, so that way when they grow up to become children, they are familiar with the terminology. But you don't baptize them if they're a child. You don't baptize them when they're able to repent and receive forgiveness. Then you would baptize them. There's no examples in the Bible of children being baptized. There's no recorded information that such would need to be baptized this phrase let the children come to me what does that mean wouldn't that show us that if jesus and his disciples were baptizing children why are the disciples forbidding the children this is matthew chapter 19 they've been with jesus since matthew chapter 3 right the baptism of jesus and him going, being tempted by the devil in the wilderness, right? This is Matthew 19. This is, I think, near the end of Jesus's ministry. And the disciples were aware of who John was baptizing. They themselves were baptizing individuals. John chapter four, verse one says that Jesus made him baptize more disciples than John. Here they are. Here come the children. If they were already familiar with and accustomed to baptizing them, why are they even having this conversation? You see, the Catholics go to their website, and their website has misinformation. So more misinformation is being spread throughout the community, and that's what we want to stop. We want to stop religious um, contradictions, religious misinformation, and we want to strive for unity. But according to the Bible, the Bible tells us what it is that we should believe, what we should teach, what we should apply. And this just isn't it. It isn't. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Look forward to speaking with you again soon. And hopefully this has been something beneficial to think about concerning Catholics and infant baptism. And even if you're not a Catholic, because the Catholics are looking at everyone else like you're crazy for not baptizing their children. They're looking at the denominational world like they are crazy. Well, the Catholics concerning doctrine are just as crazy as those in sectarian groups, denominations, because both are straying from even the main core of how to become saved and who needs to be saved, right? There is a difference between differing in doctrine concerning walking in newness of life versus differing in doctrine on how to be saved. Right, Because one would teach the truth, okay, we can agree how to become saved. Then the next question is, well, how do we walk in newness of life to stay saved? That's a completely different conversation than just saying, how are you saved? Because if you have that wrong, then 
Are you ever led to salvation if you're wrong about how to become saved? So that's a much different conversation than talking about how to walk in this life. So come back. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully it's been beneficial and leave a comment below your thoughts. You agree, you disagree, and we'll continue conversations such as this in the future. Thank you.